Our hands are myofascially connected to the spine and to the ribcage through the arms and the shoulders. This seems very logical. However, sometimes we do forget that what we do with our hands and our arms affects the alignment and the functionality of the spine. Let's experience this with a exercise that I will do in three different variations with you. So if you would like to join me, roll down onto your back, have your knees bent, your feet on the floor, the heels are fairly close towards your sit bones. I will be using two balls. You can also use balls or something else or nothing at all. It doesn't really matter. Just the balls give you nice tactile feedback on your hands. The arms are alongside of the body. And if you are using balls or other props, your hands are now resting on the props with the fingers extended in a relaxed manner, elbows also extended. And now press your hands into the balls and just notice if you feel a change in your back, release. What you're engaging is your shoulder extensors, amongst them a very large muscle named the latissimus dorsi. And maybe you feel when you're pressing your hands into the balls, there is a tone change in your back, especially your lower back. Let's do this one more time. So it is a shoulder muscle that fascially goes all the way down into the lower back to the pelvis. Just place the balls to the side for a moment and I will take my arms out to the side so you can see the movement of my spine more easily. From here, you tilt the pelvis back. We are curling up into a shoulder bridge. You let the pelvis melt into the floor. You lift the pelvis and you feel the opening in your lower back, the flexion in your lower back. Just sense how much opening there is and how does it travel up into your mid back, into your upper back until you're in a shoulder bridge position and then your spine, at least your lower back, is reasonably neutrally aligned again. Well, maybe not so much, but it's lengthened anyway. And then from here, you can start rolling down again. Sense the articulation of your spine. One vertebra at a time, flexing the spine. And then at the very end, you center it again. Movement ease in your spine. And now take the balls underneath your hands again, and or place your hands beside your body, and then press. Press your hands onto the balls strongly, and now do what you just did. <laughs> Tilt the pelvis back. Now the lower back is maybe not melting so much anymore. Now you have to press it down into the mat, and then roll up and just feel how much work you need to do in your abdominals. How is the opening in your lower back? If you keep pressing down onto the balls really strongly, if your latissimus dorsi has a decent amount of strength, it's actually very hard to articulate your lower back. And then roll down. It's a little bit easier as you're rolling down, but the rolling up certainly is, or almost, I always need to say, should be way more challenging when you're pressing your hands onto the bolts. It's almost like driving a car, having your foot on the accelerator and the brake at the same time. Big challenge. So when you're rolling up into a shoulder bridge, you're doing really well not pressing with your hands into the floor, engaging the shoulder muscles is just putting a, a restriction onto your movement. Now let's do one more time, no balls. You're tilting the pelvis back, sense again. Is this, is this easier? I hope it is. Is your op lower back opening more easily as you're curling up? integrating more easily when you are in the shoulder bridge position. And then to finish here, you can take your arms overhead and now the latissimus dorsi you engaged before, you lengthen it. You also lengthen your pectoralis major and just see if that affects the movement of your spine. Sometimes it does, it feels a little bit more challenging to articulate the spine, sometimes not so much. So what we do with our hands, with our arms, with our shoulders, does affect the movement and alignment of the spine. There's nothing wrong or right. It's just something to be aware of, that the use of your hands changes the alignment and the movement possibilities of your spine. So use it consciously.
If you would like to learn more about functional anatomy, you can join me in the online Anatomy 201 course at yogajournal.com.